Hello everyone. So today's lecture is about earthquake engineering and the various terms associated with it. To, as a civil engineering student, we have to understand uh, the various aspects related to earthquake and and uh, we have to understand what are the uh, what are the main causes of earthquakes and the various terms associated with it. Because since uh, our northeastern region is a very earthquake prone area, so whenever we are going to construct any building or any structure, we have to consider the earthquake effect uh, and 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 the various codes associated with it. So first we have to uh, understand the various terms associated with it. So the first term is uh, the first term is earthquake. So earthquake is nothing but the ground shaking and radiates seismic energy, which is mainly caused by sudden slip of a fault, volcanic or any sudden stress change in the earth. So next term is seismology. Seismology is the science dealing with the study of earthquakes in all their aspects. Okay, so seismology is an interdisciplinary science which is partly geology and partly physics. The word seismic is commonly used to qualify anything related to an earthquake, such as seismic waves, seismic intensity, seismic zoning, seismic region, and so on. Next, we have to understand uh, the meaning of the term focus or hypocenter. The place of uh, the place or the point of origin of earthquake below the surface of the earth is known as focus, or it is also known as hypocenter. But in modern uh, seismology, focus signifies a zone rather than a point of origin. It may lie from a few hundred meters to hundreds of kilometers below the surface. So the next very important term is epicenter. So epicenter is the place or point on the surface of the earth just above the focus of a particular earthquake. And it is shown by the figure 1.1. It is that geography place on the surface of the earth where the vibration from a particular earthquake reaches first of all. It is often the location of maximum damage in those areas. That means as soon as the earthquake uh, originates in a particular place, uh, epicenter is the place at which we will, uh, we will feel the uh, earth motion first and at the epicenter only the maximum damage will occur. So the next uh, important term related to earthquake is magnitude. It is nothing but the, uh, it, is, it is a term expressing the rating of an earthquake on the basis of amplitude of seismic waves and it is re uh, recorded in a device known as seismogram. This method was first used by Charles F. Richter in 1935. The next very important term is intensity. Intensity is the uh, Intensity is related to the damaging effect of an earthquake. So, if an earthquake, uh, if an earthquake causes uh, very huge damage, the, with respect to the loss of property or loss of lives, then it will be called as severe, and uh, it may be catastrophic. It may be, a, but and if an earthquake causes very little damage, then it will be known as uh, mild earthquake. So next we will study the classification of earthquake based on you know, various criteria. So the first criteria is based on focal depth. So uh, according to this criteria, earthquakes are divided into three types. One is first one is known as for shallow focus earthquake. Second one is intermediate focus earthquake, and third one is deep focus earthquake. In shallow focus earthquake, the uh, focal depth is between zero to seventy kilometer from the surface of the earth. Uh, in intermediate focus earthquake, the focal depth is between 71 km to 300 km from the surface of the earth and in deep focus earthquake, the focal depth is greater than 300 km. So the next criteria is based on magnitude. So based on this criteria, earthquakes are divided into very, uh, various classes such as micro earthquake, slight earthquake, moderate earthquake, great earthquake and very great earthquake and the magnitude on Richter scale is given in this table. So the next criteria is based on epicentral distance. So based on this epicentral distance, earthquakes are classified into four categories 
local shop, near shop, distant shop, and telesystemic shop. And the range is also shown in this table. So, there are mainly two methods of describing how large an earthquake is, and they are the intensity of an earthquake and the magnitude of an earthquake. So let us see the uh, let us see what what is mean by intensity of an earthquake in brief. So intensity is uh, another term expressing the rating of an earthquake, though broadly in a qualitative manner, on the basis of effects on living and non-living things of the region visited by it. The so there are uh, two scales of seismic intensity which can uh, by which we can measure the intensity of an earthquake and uh, which are the 10 point for rossi forel scale and the 12 point Mercalli scale the first scale was jointly proposed by de rossi of italy and forel of switzerland in 1883 and the second scale was and the second scale was uh, were proposed by Markelly in 1902. So, and the present, and the present, uh, and the present scale is a is a modified scale of Markelly. And table 1.2 shows the uh, 1.2 shows the Markelly scale of seismic intensities, and it is often abbreviated as MM scale, meaning modified Markelly scale and it is quite comprehensive in its full form. So as you can see uh, table 1.2 uh, and the heading is modified Mercury scale of earthquake intensities. So in this table you can see there are 12 classes that means earthquakes are classified into 12 various classes based on the ground acceleration and the unit of the ground acceleration is millimeter per second per second. So say in class 1 earthquake the ground acceleration value is less than 10 mm per second per second and the uh, the type of the earthquake name is instrumental and uh, in this in this instrumental type of earthquake we, uh, it will be recorded only in the seismograph and there will not be any damage to the structures and the living things living as well as the non living things say similarly say the ninth class having the ground acceleration ranges from 2500 to 5000 millimeter per second per second and it will be a ruinous type of earthquake that means in this earthquake if this intensity of earthquake will occur it will develop cracks on in the ground and when many buildings get destroyed and some strong ones get damaged and uh, the underground pipes may be broken, white cracks may be developed in the ground, reservoir and drainage systems get disturbed, and considerable loss of life may occur. So similarly, in this table, uh, we can see there are 12 classes based on the various ground accelerations and the, what, are the, what may be the possible damage they can occur, we can study from this table. Next, in very important term is, is known as magnitude so the strength of an earthquake or strain energy released by it is usually measured by a parameter called magnitude and it is determined by the amplitudes and periods of seismic waves of different types so there are various mainly four magnitudes are in at present and uh, they are local or Richter magnitude, which is shortly in short, it is written ML. Next is body wave magnitude, third is surface wave magnitude, and this fourth one is moment magnitude. Next, we have to study about the various types of seismic waves related, uh, which are generated as soon as the as soon as an earthquake uh, uh, as soon as an earthquake broke out in a particular area. So the uh, first wave is known as body waves. So these waves are uh, traveled through the rocks and hence they are called as body waves. Body waves, they are mainly of two types. Uh, the first one is longitudinal and the second one is transverse. So let us see what is transverse, longitudinal waves. 
So these longitudinal waves are sometimes called as P waves or primary waves or these are also called as push waves. As the waves, <coughs> so in this wave, the particle moves along the direction of propagation of earthquake wave. Next we have to study about transverse waves. So transverse waves are also known as secondary waves or S waves. These waves are just like ripples which are formed in a pond. So the particle within uh, the transmitting medium is at right angles to the direction of, of wave propagation. And figure 1.13b will show these uh, longitudinal waves and transverse waves. For example, uh, the, as soon as we throw a stone on a, on a, in a pond, some ripples are formed. And if we place a cork in that water, it will just move up and down while the wave travels at right angles to the cork movement. So, in transverse waves, the particles will vibrate in its own position, but the waves will travel at right angles to the vibration of the particles. So, these P and S waves are sometimes collectively known as body waves because they travel deep into the body of the earth before re-emerging on the surface. These figures, figure 1.3a shows the primary waves. As you can see in this figure, as soon as the wave is generated, first in this portion it, you can see expansion expansion occur and then compression then again expansion then again compression that means this wave will, will create uh, compression and rarefraction or push and pull push and pull and so these waves are also known as push or uh, pull waves similarly next figure uh, shows the uh, character the movement of an s wave as you can see, the, uh, in this wave, the particles will vibrate in, a part in its own position, but the waves will travel uh, in the perpendicular direction of the vibration of the particles. So next wave is known as surface waves. So these waves are mainly related to the surface of the earth. And these waves mainly cause, these surface waves cause the maximum damage in a particular place. So there are two types of surface waves which are known as love waves and rolling waves as shown in the following figure. This is uh, this figure 1.13 shows the love wave and figure 1.13d shows the rolling wave. Next we have to see what is energy release. As soon as an earthquake generates there is a huge uh, amount of energy is released. And this energy uh, can be detected only with the help of very sensitive instruments. However, the energy release at the time of a large earthquake is indeed enormous. To measure the size of an earthquake, seismologists use Richter magnitude scale. Next, we have to understand by what is seismograph. So, seismograph is the device by which we can measure earthquake. So, till now, <coughs> So a study of seismograms that is the records produced by seismographs can yield information not only about the time and place of occurrence of an earthquake but also the rocks through which earthquake energy travels. So at last we can say that since India is located in a uh, very earthquake prone area so we have to critically analyze the past history of earthquake uh, which, is, uh, which has occurred in that particular region and also we have to understand the various terms associated with it so that whenever we will design any structure or any high rise buildings we have to we will consider uh, the earthquake effect so that uh, it can so that uh, we can uh, minimize the effect of earthquake uh, in the uh, coming near future so thank you very much for uh, being with me uh, throughout the lecture and hope this will uh, this lecture will clear your doubts and if you have any doubt you can contact me uh, uh, through my whatsapp number or 
you can direct you can email me in my uh, email id which is given in student portal as well as in uh, some downtown university website thank you i hope you have a very pleasant time and thank you very much